Are you looking for an easy way to get a delicious dinner without spending all day in the kitchen? If so, sheet pan dinners are for you. They take very little prep, most of them are fairly healthy, and they are a great way to use up all those vegetables laying around on their last leg. I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen. Just sit back, relax, grab you a sweet tea, and I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks I've learned about sheet pan meals, and I'm going to show you some that are anything but ordinary. We're going to start with the very classic, quick and easy chicken and veggie sheet pan meal. This is wonderful to use up any vegetables that you have that may be about ready to go bad. Great way to use up all those odds and ends and season it however you like. And I'm already behind the gun here. It was getting late, so I'm going to do my potatoes in the microwave. I've just chopped them up, put them in a microwave safe dish, coat them in a little bit of oil, season them with some anti no nos, which is salt, onion powder, and garlic powder. Give them another good toss put some butter on top of them. Then I'm just gonna cover them with some cling wrap and microwave them about five or seven minutes and let them set a little while. Next, I am chopping up all of my veggies. I've got some red onion, some zucchini and squash, trying to make it all about the same size pieces. I had one bell pepper that I needed to use up and I had a carton of grape tomatoes and these were kind of big so I'm cutting them in half too. I've got them on my sheet pan and I'm just drizzling them with a little oil and going to coat them with some anti no nos and then I'm just tossing them all around to make sure they're all covered. I've got my chicken on another pan and it's just some very thin sliced chicken breast. I'm rubbing it with a little bit of oil here. Sometimes I'll use melted butter. Seasoning it up with anti no nos everything seasoning. And I like this seafood seasoning. It's got paprika, brown sugar, and a little bit of lemon. I'm putting this in a 425 degree oven. And then after about 10 minutes, I'm gonna stir my veggies put it back in. After about 15 more minutes, everything is done. You just want to make sure your chicken's cooked thoroughly. This is one of my favorite things to do in the summer or really anytime. It is so quick, easy, delicious, and flavorful. Of course, you may need to adjust your oven anywhere with these sheet pan meals between 400 to 425, maybe even 450. You know your oven better than I do. Just play around with it. And of course, these usually take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, just depending on what your protein is. And if you're cooking your potatoes in there, normally I'll start them a little bit before the rest of the meal. This is one of my favorites. It's so beautiful with all these colors and so delicious. Look at this beautiful spread of ingredients tonight. I'm really excited about making this. Number one, it's a sheet pan meal, so it's gonna be all in one. And Patrick loves a smoked sausage, kielbasa, whatever. I rarely make it because I don't really like them, but I wanted to do this one for him. And it's a kielbasa sausage and gnocchi sheet pan meal. First things first, getting all of our veggies washed up. Then we can get to slicing and dicing our veggies up. I'm just taking two bell peppers and I'm just slicing them in about one inch pieces. This is a tip I shared in my last video, but I'll share it again. If you will rinse and then dry off your onions after you slice them, they will really not burn your eyes as much. That was a little tip that my mom gave me. And I'm just doing about half of this little red onion in slices about that big. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my little cherry tomatoes in half. These were oblong and really big not the little small ones I normally get. This recipe said to take a 14 ounce smoked sausage and cut it into six pieces. I think mine ended up being 
about 12 ounces, but I think I'm also going to slice these in half. I have been enjoying sheet pan meals so much, I bought me a gigantic sheet pan. I'll put the measurements up on the screen. I actually got this at Ollie's Discount Store. It's made by Baker's Secret. Sometimes it's a little lightweight and it'll kind of like bump up on one end when it's in the oven. But hey, it gets the job done. And I'm putting some parchment paper down. Normally, I buy this on the roll, but last time it was these reusable, it says, parchment pre-cut sheets. So it takes two of them. And that's just for easy cleanup for me. I'm sure if you didn't have parchment sheets, if you just took some aluminum foil and sprayed it down, it would probably work just as well. I've got a 16 ounce container of this potato gnocchi. If you've never used this, you find it around where pastas and things like that are in your grocery store. This recipe called for two 14 or 12 ounce, but I'm just using one 16 ounce container of it. Now I'm putting my peppers and onions, the tomatoes too. And you don't have to be real precise yet. We are going to mix it all up again. I'm going to throw a couple little spoonfuls of some minced garlic in here. Now I'm just taking a nice drizzle, probably about two tablespoons of olive oil. Getting that all across the top. Then I'm just going to mix it all up. Want to make sure everything's got a little bit of olive oil on it. You could definitely do this in a bowl before you even put it down here to spread it out, but I'm just going for easy cleanup tonight. Me and Maddie and my mama are going to see the new Little Mermaid tonight. <laughs> you don't ever get too old for stuff like that. I can't wait. Now that I've got it all coated, I am gonna go ahead and hit mine with a little bit of salt and pepper. The recipe kind of waits to the end to do this, but I want some on it now. Now we're taking our sausages and we're just gonna lay them right across the top of all of our veggies. My rosemary sprigs are nice and big, so I'm actually gonna break them in half and I'm just gonna lay them right down in here. And I'm going to put this in the oven for about 25 minutes. And then I'm going to stir it about halfway through, put it back in and let it finish cooking off. Now we're just going to take some fresh spinach. This is not baby spinach. It's a little bit bigger leaf, but it'll be fine. We're just going to put this over the top, spread it out evenly. I'm going to grab my rosemary out of here too. I forgot about that. Another thing I forgot to mention was that if you're using frozen gnocchi, don't thaw it before you get started. Just leave it like it is and it works out fine. I'm gonna go back in the oven for about two minutes. Now we are gonna stir it right back up. This smells so good and it looks so pretty. I'm going to give it another little dose of salt and pepper. Y'all thought I forgot about that fresh basil, didn't you? Got it all kind of chopped up and I'm going to sprinkle it on. Then I'm taking a little bit of shredded Parmesan cheese, sprinkling it all over the top. Look how beautiful the colors are when this is all plated up. This is gorgeous. Let me get some spinach, tomato, and a little piece of this bell pepper. And let's try a gnocchi too, see if I can get all that in my mouth. Mmm, that's a good flavor. Be careful that you make sure and get all your gnocchis covered good with oil because I have a few that are kind of toasty. And I don't like this, or I haven't liked this, but I'm going to try this piece of sausage here. See if my taste has changed. It ain't my favorite. <laughs> it's good. I mean, like, it's a good flavor. 
it's a texture thing for me. I'm just not crazy about it. But it has a good flavor. If you like sausages, you'll love it in here. Now see, if I'd had chicken in here, that would have been more up my alley. But this has a really good flavor. This is from Aldi. But like I said, it's texture. That's the same reason I don't eat hot dogs. Right there. But this is delicious. Give it a try. Let's make a salmon with asparagus and potato sheet pan meal. I've got a bag of the little small white gold potatoes. I'm just going to make them all about this size. Most of them would be halved, but some of them I might have to quarter. I changed my mind and I only did about half of that bag of potatoes. I'm just going to drizzle it with some oil. Give it a little salt, a little black pepper, probably a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a couple teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Now we're going to get that all stirred up and coated. We know that potatoes take a little bit longer to cook than most of the other things. So I have the oven set to 400 degrees. I'm going to put this in for 10 minutes. Got a little bit of asparagus here and I have washed it up really good. And you can just snap these and it will snap at the right place. But honestly, I ain't got time for that tonight. So I'm just going to trim off the woody ends and just trust me go a little bit shorter than you might think you need to. Asparagus ready. Now we're going to make a glaze for our fish. We're doing two tablespoons of melted butter. We're also putting in two tablespoons of honey. And I'm just kind of eyeballing this. One teaspoon of Dijon mustard and about half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Mix that together and we'll set it aside. Our potatoes have cooked 10 minutes. Now we're going to take our salmon and this still has the skin on it. We're going to put it skin side down in the middle of our pan. And guys, this is the first time I have ever made salmon steaks at home. So I am learning with you. I did a little bit of reading and it said to cook it with the skin side down because that will actually make it nice and crispy, and you can eat that. I ain't saying we're going to, but you can. And it also protects it from burning. We're also gonna lay our asparagus out right here. We're gonna drizzle it with just a little bit of oil. Give it some salt and pepper. Now we're gonna take this beautiful honey, oil, butter, mustard mixture and put it right across the top of this fish. You can see those pretty Italian seasonings in here. Another thing I learned about salmon, which if you've seen it cooked, you know it's still red even when it's done. So the way that you know it is done is whenever you touch it after it's cooked with the top of your fork or maybe your hand and it begins to flake at these little white places, kind of where it comes together. You know it's done. Also, you cook it to an internal temperature of about 145 degrees. And I'm using all of this sauce because I think it's fine if it gets a little bit over in your veggies, that would be good. And one more thing I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of lemon juice and douse my asparagus and maybe just a little bit on my fish because I forgot to buy a lemon. Now we're going to put this back in the 400 degree oven for 15 minutes. Okay guys, I don't think this is too bad for my first time. I'm going to go in this thickest part that I can find right here. Definitely it's done. It's probably way overdone, but I followed the instructions. But this white stuff, I'm not sure how you say this. It's A-L-B-U-M-I-N. Albi albium, I'll put the albium, albumin. albumin. This is called albumin. I'll put that word up on the screen for you. But this is just a protein in the salmon and it solidifies as it cooks and comes out. So I'm glad I read that because that would have worried me. But anyhow, I'm telling y'all this like you don't know. This is my first time cooking it. Y'all probably know this, but hey, if there's another first timer out there, that's just a little tidbit for you. Let's plate it up. 
You can see it's flaking just like what I read said it would. Okay, first things first, I know I'm gonna love these. I also love asparagus. And I'm gonna try me a bite. I have eaten a bite or two of salmon. It's been a long, a long time ago. I honestly don't remember if I liked it. So let's see what we got. That is very, very good. I am pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. And I'm not gonna eat the skin this time. I think this venture is enough for me. That is delicious. I'm so excited with this and so proud. You guys just inspire me to try cooking new things that I've never cooked before. 51 years old is my first time ever making like a salmon steak. I don't know why I waited so long. I have one more tip before we hit my most favorite sheet pan meal of all times and that is do not overlook these packets in your grocery store. There are so many varieties. McCormick's does a great job. They have about four of these different things right here. This is one of my favorites. They've got one for pork chops too. They've also come out with these one skillet ones. But you know what? All these things, they're just seasonings. You can mix them and make dressing or you can just use it as a seasoning pack for veggies, chicken, beef, whatever you like. So be creative and these are super cheap. Y'all know I am all about a quick, cheap, and easy way to get dinner on the table and I have no shame in my packet game. Now let's make a creamy chicken sheet pan dinner. The great thing about sheet pan dinners is you don't have a lot of active cooking. You chop up your ingredients and you're not stuck over the stove flipping things in a frying pan. I'm chopping up some broccoli and some red potatoes and I'm going to use two different sheet pans tonight. I have my broccoli and some very thin sliced chicken breast on one pan and this sheet pan meal also has a wonderful sauce. We're gonna mix up one can of cream of chicken soup. We're gonna put in just a little bit of minced garlic, and I'm gonna sprinkle in maybe a teaspoon of dried parsley flakes. Also gonna add in about a third a cup of Parmesan cheese and get it all mixed up. Now we're gonna start seasoning everything up. We're gonna start out by just drizzling a little oil over everything. And I'm using two pans here. If you don't have a huge pan, that is perfectly fine. Use two smaller ones. As a matter of fact, in this meal, it worked out better because, you know, potatoes do take a little bit longer. So I can cook them a little bit longer or start them sooner if I need to to make sure everything's done about the same time. And I'm just seasoning everything with some black pepper and some of my anti no nos Then we're going to put that sauce over our chicken breast and use every bit of the sauce, even if you think it's more than enough. It's gonna cook down and it's wonderful to dip your vegetables in. I'm gonna put both these in the oven at 425 degrees for about 20 minutes. And I did broil my chicken just to get a little bit of brownness on the top. But this sheet pan dinner has all the comfort, cozy, home-cooked vibes, that sauce or gravy, if you will. This does not feel like a regular sheet pan meal. This feels like a good home cooked meal. I love my broccoli charred just a little bit. So the little bit of broil on it was just perfect with me. If you're enjoying tonight's video, I would love it if you'd give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what was your favorite meal of the night and are sheet pan meals something that you cook a lot of or is this kind of a new thing to you? I've only really started doing this in the last few years, but I tell you, I really, really love a sheet pan meal. Thank you so much for watching this week. I appreciate the time that you set aside every Sunday to spend with me. I'll see you next week. Until then, I send you love from my kitchen. <laughs>